get hammered. Um, if that happens, bonds will rally and maybe stocks will sell off. So that's a, a very uh, distinct possibility down the track. So we're watching those bonds, getting ready to buy some uh, if we get a buy signal on the bonds. So it's a very uh, interesting situation now. Um, has the Fed done enough to stop the rot? How much selling is up here on this rally? Uh, I'll be watching it very closely. And if it turns down soon, watch. Hi there. Uh, welcome to the closing bell on the 3rd of November. And we've had a bit of movement, haven't we? Um, we've been selling off for months. Uh, last week, I was saying it's not time to get short. Uh, it's time to consider taking some profits. If the market turns and rallies, uh, it was on really on tender hooks on very important support. And it looks like for the moment that support is going to hold. So I just want to take you through how I'm going to be looking at things from here on out uh, after that big rally uh, based on what the FOMC uh, came out and said. You know, Powell's comments uh, seemed a bit dovish, although, you know, there still could be interest rate rises coming. So this could be just a short term short squeeze that then turns back down. So I just want to set the scene for you. Um, so you can have a sense um, of what we'll be looking at going forward and uh, what we need to see to really turn and get bullish, um, you know, because that could happen from here. So I just wanted to uh, set the scene with a long-term chart of this S&P 500, just looking at the, the weekly trend that I look at. And look, no trend you use is going to be perfect. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's impossible. Uh, markets are far too chaotic. Um, but once you set your scene with something that you're willing to uh, rely on, uh, it can be really helpful to give you a sense of when to switch tack, when to say, rightio, I'd better um, uh, turn from being super bearish to uh, maybe slightly bullish or what, what have you. So just following along that uh, over a long period of time, that 10-week exponential against the 20-week simple, See how it has caught quite long periods uh, of these uh, trends, giving you sort of a timely warning, and they never work perfectly. So you'll have small moments uh, which don't really work, but then look at that. That's pretty much an uptrend based on that weekly chart for nearly two years from 2013 to 2015, and it only went negative there. So that was pretty good, wasn't it? having a two year period. And, and there it's got you, you know, wary of the downside before it really turned down. And then from 2016 through to 2018, there's a two year period where the weekly uh, trend was up. Then we had a little bit of a period of negativity. And again, weekly trend for months. And look at that pretty early warning before that big sell off Then turned up there again. 2019, 2020, and then turned down just as it was collapsing. And then we've got the weekly trend turns up there. You can see that weekly trend up for 21, 2020, 21, all the way uh, through to the highs that we've seen before that big sell-off. So I just wanted to set the scene there for you that this, um, weekly trend it's pretty useful uh, to keep your eye on as far as you know uh, getting pretty early uh, warning signs about what's going on so just following along with the s p 500 and what we've seen um i'll even go in a bit further to make it really clear for people on their mobile phones and if we just really look at this now and say rightio uh we had that weekly downtrend, went down pretty early, didn't it? And this is how these trends evolve, right? Everyone gets whipped out. Everyone gets killed, bulls and bears. Uh, the market uh, loves to have big retracements, uh, get people sucked into short positions, then turn and get them bullish. But that's why I look at these large retracements of waves. You know, I look at these big waves and a 75% retracement, another big wave, another big retracement. And this is sort of how it moves and you've got to be aware of that. So once that weekly trends turn down, 
and it's sold off a long way, but look at how it's done it. Uh, when you really get up close and think about it, you've had a very sharp sell-off there. Really sharp rally, big sell-off, which broke below the low. And then look at that, a huge, big, sharp rally for what, nearly a month. Getting to there, then it's still in weekly downtrend. So do you see that, that the 10-week exponential still below the 20 simple? So in my view, I'm saying, well, this is still weak, even though it's just been rallying in straight line up. So when we saw the um, weekly sell pivot there, you can see there, prices rallying, then turning down, we get a weekly close below the low of that highest price candle in the move higher. And that's when I'm starting to say, well, watch out here. It's in weekly downtrend momentum turning back down in the short term things could turn down here and then you've got a big wave to the downside and it's always doing this really looking terrible people who are bearish are all getting short you know um when things get down uh, below a low so you know you'll have a previous low and a lot of amateurs will be getting really excited saying, oh, let's get short here. And, you know, often they're the people that uh, get killed on those big short squeezes, which which come along um, so often. So uh, just bringing it uh, up to speed with what we're looking at um, right now, you'll see that we uh, saw prices retrace, as we said last week, it's fallen uh, down to retest that midpoint, which was the target. And you'll re hopefully remember from all the way back here, when prices were rallying up into this area, um, I was letting you know, well, this is sort of the spot where I'm wary that things could turn, turn down from, being the sell zone of this whole correction. So that's a 75 to 87% retracement. Got up in there. We got the sell pivot. I'm starting to follow this along saying, well, watch out because once it turns, the target is all the way back down at that midpoint, the point of control. And you'll see from last week, we're looking at that point of control and we're looking in the past. Uh, I've shown you uh, how often it'll retest that point of control and even turn down. So once it retests the point of control, that's where I was saying the odds from this point of it either cracking and falling down there or finding support and you know possibly even heading back to the sell zone again, sort of becomes closer to, ooh, that's a nice five, 50%, your odds. So once your odds are returning to 50%, uh, that's when you want to be taking money off the table because if it does turn, uh, all of a sudden, you know, it could rally all the way back to the high. And who knows, maybe it could even take off. Who knows? But uh, that's why you should be putting on positions in this area when it's early and starting to turn down, momentum shifting, when you get your signals, which I've been showing you over this last period, and I was saying, watch out, this thing can get hammered. And it did. But you do have to be uh, having plans on what to do if the support comes in. And when the Fed came out and we had a, a night of a rally um, after the Fed, I actually did send something out to cover a third of our short position um, the day before uh, this rally on Friday, the big rally. So... Uh, we're now in a position with our shorts um, in one of my services where if it does rally, uh, you know, we're either going to break even on this trade. Uh, but if prices turn back down again, we now have very clear lines in the sand, don't we? Um, below those lows from last week, watch out. Uh, it can really get hammered. So I still want to maintain a short position in case uh, that happens. And it is still in weekly downtrend. So we can have uh, whatever rally you like, a big spike and failure. But as long as it 
stays below you know the high of the whole structure from a few months ago uh, it can still be heading down and you've got to be aware of that um, so you know this week depending on what happens tonight and you will know more than me uh, if it has created that weekly buy pivot so that's a weekly close above the high of last week and that weekly buy pivot is from you know major level the midpoint of that correction well uh, in the short term that sort of switches off that very negative um, view that it's, it's just going to collapse and i was saying to you last week uh you know if it does bounce from this midpoint you know you'll see in the past it can then stuff around for a while uh, before finally breaking out and that's when you get that sharp move to that uh other side of the range so uh it's now you know interesting to see what happens from here uh, if that weekly buy pivot is in place you know does it try to keep rallying getting those shorts out uh, and then turn back down that's very possible um but you are aware of the fact that the rally that's coming um just know that if the selling comes back in, it can look bad really quick. And uh, you can see there that once it failed, once it turns down and hit the weekly close, then below that 10 week exponential moving average within the downtrend, that's when momentum really turns down. So you first had that weekly sell pivot, you'll see there, which was that guy there. And then you had the next week was bad as well, uh, confirming closing below the 10-week exponential. And that's when you're saying, boy, uh, watch out here. And I did actually say that at the time, uh, if you go back and watch my videos. So it's a little, sort of a similar situation here. Um, but this rally could have legs uh, for a few weeks. And, you know, how... Um, what the bonds do, the bonds have turned down from that 5% level, the 10 years. You know they could rally if they do rally well um you know a bit of weakness could find buying support if the weekly trend you know then turns up uh and then especially taking out that high everything can look different and i'm willing to turn on a dime so i'll just jump to the monthly to show you what i need to see to get bullish so this is where it uh, gets interesting with this s p because that rally in the last year, it has turned into long-term uptrend, hasn't it? So the question is, uh, is this right? Is it really in long-term uptrend? And we're just seeing a retest and then it's gonna blast off and really surprise everyone. So what I'd need to see, first of all, would be the weekly, uh, sorry, monthly buy pivot. So that would be, uh, you know, monthly close, above the high of that candle which is 4430 you know another 100 points higher not that far so if the if november finishes the month above 4430 that's going to make things tricky for me uh, because it is apparently in this long-term uptrend or at least we've had a shift so if i then get the monthly buy pivot from there it's going to make it difficult for me uh, to stay uh, fully bearish, which I am at the moment. Uh, but just the way it is now, monthly sell pivot is the key. We've had another bad month and it's trying to rally. There should be selling pressure. So things are set up to uh, attempt to rally, turn back down. And yeah, if it busts below that low now, uh, which would be back below the 20 month moving average uh yeah it's it, the dominoes are lined up and it's the setup is there i guess to say now uh, we've got our lines in the sand below that low um watch out i think the market could get creamed and the rally at the moment you're wary of um wondering whether the selling is going to come back in but if it keeps going get a nice strong close this month and especially busting out above that high, it's going to look different. It's going to look very different. And uh, 
I will be, you know, out of my shorts, uh, letting longs run and possibly looking to buy some stuff. Um, so that's sort of how much this market is on tenterhooks. Uh, you know, what, what's coming next? And I guess it is about those rates. Um, uh, are we near the peak? Do those 10-year bonds start rallying now? In, in which case, you'd want to be bond, getting some bond exposure um, just in case the markets are about to get, uh, that growth is going to get hammered. Um, if that happens, bonds will rally and maybe stocks will sell off. So that's a, a very a distinct possibility down the track. So we're watching those bonds, getting ready to buy some uh, if we get a buy signal on the bonds. So it's a very uh, interesting situation now. Um, has the Fed done enough to stop the rot? How much selling is up here on this rally? Uh, I'll be watching it very closely. And if it turns down soon, watch out. Um, I'd love it if someone could press a like button on my video on YouTube. Um, that would be nice. I don't get many of them. Um, so I've, I think I've got to start asking for them. Uh, if you're enjoying it, if I've uh, added some value uh, to your day, see if you can press a like on my video. I'd love it. Cheers. <laughs>